Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just, uh, you know, coming off uh, one in three week, a tough start to our season. Felt like we played uh, really good over at the MLB tournament. Uh, great competition. First class event. Um, our guys had a, a blast playing over there. Uh, we were treated like big leaguers, so it was kind of fun. And then uh, stumbled on Tuesday, um, but uh, we're getting ready for the uh, Tony Gwynn Classic or Tony Gwynn Legacy Tournament this weekend. Uh, um, it's been a great event for us in the past, and we're looking forward to uh, six teams in our tournament this year. It's normally eight, but uh, due to COVID, we lost some of the teams. But um, it's a very good field this this uh, season, and we're really looking forward to uh, great competition in the next uh, few days. Thank you, Coach. Open it up for questions. Go ahead, Lee. Uh, Coach Lee Hamilton, thanks for doing this. Uh, I got a philosophical question. Um, such a young team. The challenge as a coach to develop a pitching staff to be able to play as many games as you play, is that a bigger challenge than develop young hitters to be able to handle what they're facing in a 50 or 60 game schedule? Well, you know, I think last year our, our pitching staff was more in a development stage. The numbers showed that, you know, we're a little younger and experienced on the mound. Um, we returned some guys that are battle tested on the mound this year and, and it's kind of flip flop from last year. Last year we had a a veteran group on the offensive side and, and those numbers kind of reflected that. So, you know, right now we're, we're, uh, learning as we go, you know, dealing with anxiety and, and, uh, you know, guys that, that are getting after it and, you know, um, trying to show their, their, uh, worth on the field. And so uh, hopefully at some point, you know, the younger guys will settle in and, and start playing baseball instead of worrying about, taking batting practice in the in, in the box or worrying about their mechanics. Uh, we're just trying to get them away from that and just go out and perform and have a good time. So we're very young. You're right. You know, we I think we had uh, four or five freshmen on the field opening night. Um, that's going to continue to be the theme. Those are the guys that we're running with, and it's a good group, very talented. They just need to settle in and, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, – you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing this weekend it's another opening day for us, so there's going to be some added, you know, pressure, more families in the stands and those kinds of things. So um, we'll, we'll continue to grind through it, and hopefully they'll grow grow up to the Division One game. And a question about the transfer portal. I think there were 2,200 uh, football players in the portal. I think in college basketball is in excess of 1,400 that have gone through it. Uh, has, it has it been a big impact in college baseball, and is that a way to – snare kids or is, is that too big a reach well there's almost 3,000 kids in the transfer portal you know in baseball so that that's kind of you know that's kind of the uh, I guess the environment we're living in now you know it's just part of it you know and so I think what we worry about right now is is making sure our kids have a great experience here at San Diego State I mean who, who has it better than us so hopefully that doesn't we don't fill that up you know with a lot of guys wanting to get out of here but um, you know, to, to go into the transfer portal and find players, you know, that, that's an option for us. Um, you know, this, this year we have uh, Alex Rodriguez, who, who came to us from uh, USC, and Sean Montoya the, from um, Irvine. Um, you know, is it going to be a norm for us? It's got to be the right fit for us. You know, and that, that's honestly, we got to do our homework on, on why guys are leaving other programs and those kinds of things. So, um, looking at you know the recruiting down the road as far as the transfer portal has just got to be the right fit for San Diego State and, and our culture and our program. Great, thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you, Lee. We'll go to Jenna. Hi, Coach. <clears throat> um, going back to the weekend's game against TCU, obviously the program held a really close game to a nationally ranked program. What statement do you think that makes about the young team? Well, we got to finish, you know, and, and you know, on, on paper, we had it exactly lined up the way we wanted it to be. You know, we uh, we had set up our back end of our bullpen with Joey and Gracia to come in the seventh, Jane Berkovich in the eighth, and then our closer, Robert Brodell, um, to, to come in in the ninth and close it out for us, and that didn't happen. You know, we uh, walked a couple guys, had a, you know, real big base hit for them, and um, you know, but that's just all part of growing into the game, right? You know, and, and uh, you know, that's Robert's first opportunity to go out there and it was Berkovich's first time out and he did a nice job, but we're going to get a lot of first as we get, you know, early part of the season and, and hopefully we get some of those uh, um, kinks out of the armor, right? And get and kind of shine that up a little bit moving forward. But, uh, you know, we had it set exactly how we wanted it and, and we're going to continue to run with that uh, moving through the season. As long as they stay healthy, 
we're going to hand the ball off to those three guys at the back end of the games, you know, for winning games. So that's uh, that's how we want it set up. And Robert, uh, you know, got the ball on Sunday to kind of hopefully, you know, keep us close in the, in the game against Cal. He did a great job. And we're going to continue to hand the ball at the back end of the games, and we really trust that he can finish games for us. Great. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Jenna. We'll go to Austin. Hey, Coach, we've hit on pitching a little bit so far, uh, but I wanted to ask you particularly, uh, what are your thoughts on the true freshman Eldridge Armstrong, Ryan Fox, and Chris Canada? Well, you know, um, starting with Chris, he's got a little bit more time. You know, he's a big left-hander. He's about 6'7", um, fills up strike zone. Um, again, his first outing, I think his heart rate was somewhere around 200 um, and, and had to get through that. The inning he threw, he did a great job. He got himself in a little bit of trouble, but but got out of it um, clean. He pitched again on Tuesday night. Um, you know, Ryan came in against uh, Irvine this weekend, and so did uh, or this Tuesday. So did Eldridge. You know, those guys are big arms for us. You know, uh, uh, they're gonna they're gonna have definite roles for us moving forward, and they're gonna see time this week. You know, we got five games in five days, so you're gonna see those guys get out there again, and they're gonna continue to grow and hopefully get better. And then final one for me, any update on T.J. Fontaine, who appeared to be injured in a start against TCU? Well, he did the the mortal sin of pointing to his arm when I went out there um, to, to kind of see what was going on. And, and honestly, that was T.J.'s first uh, time, you know, starting in a collegiate game on the mound. And um, he was gassed. You know, he had emptied the tank, basically. And, and uh, so when I went out there, you could see he was trying to catch his breath. And he had a little tightness in his arm, obviously, because he's very fatigued. Hadn't experienced a uh, you know a Friday night start before, but he's fine. He's going to start tomorrow night, and and uh, hopefully he can kind of extend his outing. Uh, hopefully his fitness is uh, intact for this week. Great, thank you. You bet. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead, John. Hey, coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what's this tournament mean to your program? Well, it means everything. You know, we celebrate Tony pretty much every day. Um, you know, and I think the one thing that, that we want to continue to do here at San Diego State is celebrate, you know, Tony's legacy. Um, you know, and uh, we talk about him a lot. Uh, we talk about Tony's, you know, character. Um, we try to match that character within our program. Um, you know, and the, the one thing about our, our tournament, you know, is that really now it's educating younger people about Tony, you know, and, and you know, the majority of the kids – Probably all the kids that, uh, uh, you know, are playing this weekend never saw Tony play, um, you know. And so what we did prior to the tournament, or I did, I sent out uh, the MLB documentary they did on Tony to each one of the programs. Asked the programs, you know, if they had time to watch that deal so they kind of get a little better education on why we're having the Tony Gwynn Legacy Tournament. Um, and also kind of what Tony stands for, you know, and if you watch that documentary, there's not a whole lot about, you know, there's a little bit about him talk, you know, hitting a baseball, but it's really more about his character, what kind of father he was, um, you know, grandfather, husband, um, just all around great person, you know, and, and that's what we're celebrating, you know, the impact that he had, not only on the Padres organization, but the university here, San Diego State, and then of course, the city of San Diego. So we're going to celebrate that we're going to continue to do that. On Saturday, I asked all the teams if they would wear 19 like uh, Jackie Robinson Day. So all the teams on Saturday, um, everybody's going to wear 19 um, uh, to honor Tony. Um, we do that, you know, with our, our guys in-house. Uh, every year we'll have one guy wear 19. The three days of the tournament, uh, we'll do that on Friday and Sunday, but everybody gets to wear it on, on Saturday. So I'm, I'm, I'm touched that we get to do that. It's going to be awesome. Awesome day for us. Awesome weekend. I think it was extremely well said. Uh, do you find yourself, sorry, my dog's barking. Do you, do you find yourself sometimes, I'm sure you do, thinking what would Tony do on this spot? Well, I, I don't know. I, I told a story the other day is that we have a chair, Tony's chair in the dugout. Um, it's right. still been there. And, um, of course, I, I sit in that a lot because I need his help a lot, you know, because I <laughs> just try to get some Tony love. But uh, our guys know not to sit in it unless we say, hey, you know what? Um, you're not doing great today. Why don't you get some Tony love and, and they'll sit in there and, you know, kind of soak up some, some of Tony's wisdom. And, and, uh, it's really funny. Um, a lot of times when the guys do sit in the chair, there's usually something, I think it kind of gets their mind at ease and they go out and they perform really well. So 
Um, that's sacred ground, but uh, we use that, uh, you know, kind of get some Tony love from, you know, from, from where he, wherever he is.